Well, it's that time of year again. Yeah, it's Christmas time for mostly everybody else. I kinda celebrate Christmas because my wife does, but I wanted to take a minute to kind of reflect on the holidays and talk about some nostalgic gaming moments that I have uh, growing up. And, you know, I thought, thought this would be a really cool opportunity to do so. Uh, my good buddy uh, Nefarious West just did a video very similar to this uh, where he kind of focused on, you know, his Christmas of 1988 where he was talking about how he got, oh, hi Zelda, how he got, speaking of which, Zelda 2, uh, The Adventures of Link. But I am going to be talking about three different stories all related to my Hanukkah experiences. Um, I grew up Jewish and so I would often, you know, get gifts at different times, like sometimes before people, sometimes after people regarding Christmas. It really all depends on when it falls on the calendar year as far as the, you know, Judaic calendar. So, kind of weird, but, um, you know, I've had uh, Hanukkah be as early as, like, like Thanksgiving, <laughs> which is pretty nuts, getting your, like, gifts right after or just after Thanksgiving or even sometimes on Thanksgiving, which is very rare. But uh, yeah, so I've got three different stories, three different experiences that I, I wanted to kind of share with everybody uh, regarding my, my gaming history. So um, regarding Hanukkah, it's the Festival of Lights. It's, uh, uh, it's not like a super religious holiday. Um, I know Christmas is super religious for most Christians, um, but uh, you know, there's also people that celebrate Christmas without the whole, you know, Christian thing as well. Uh, a lot of people are doing that. So, um, but for me, I, I grew up Jewish, so we celebrated Hanukkah. Um, we were raised Jewish. Uh, my mother is actually Christian, so, um, but my family decided to raise me and my brother Jewish. So, um, you know, I was a, a lifelong gamer since I was, you know, maybe five or six, probably about five. Uh, so probably like 1988, 89, like around then. So I'm going to go in chronological order regarding these stories. And uh, that's it. You know, keep it real chill. Uh, so the first story is going to be regarding a, not, not just a game, uh, but it kind of changed the way that I played video games, which is really cool. Um, it, back then, like around 1990, 89, like around then, I think it was maybe 90, um, there was a game that I really wanted, and uh, I, 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 well, this game, Ninja Gaiden 2, <sighs> such a good game, Dark Side of Chaos, uh, or Dark Sword of Chaos, rather. Um, so this is not my original copy of the game, however, this is my original childhood manual. I've talked about this in a different video, but uh, this is the manual that I had growing up uh, from my original copy of the game, which is really cool. I'm, I'm glad I still have some of these memories at least, or at least some of these you know, physical things that I had from my childhood collection growing up. I'm checking to see if I wrote anything in it. It doesn't look like I did. Oh well. So, Ninja Gaiden 2 is really a, a very special game because it also marks uh, the time that I also got a TV for my bedroom, which was super cool. So, back in the day, in 1989, 1990, uh, which this game came out, I believe, in 90, but back in the day, I didn't have my own television. Uh, I had the TV in the living room, uh, which was like one of those like wood grain, like, you know, I had the, the wood grain on the on the sides and it had the built-in speakers and everything. And uh, that was my TV and it was like a 20 something inch. And my dad was always like super paranoid that like, if I left a game on pause for too long, it would like burn into the screen. That was like a huge fear of his. Um, a couple years later, we ended up getting a a uh, big screen TV, like a, a project, rear projection TV, you know, with the guns in the back that, you know, shoot the, the red, blue, and green. Um, this huge, like, 53-inch, same thing, like, wood grain on the bottom, like, ginormous TV, which I had, you know, we had for years. 
and um, he would never let me play games on that TV because he always thought that it would ruin the TV. So, you know, that was kind of what they had warned. I don't know. There may be some truth to that, but who knows. Anyways, so uh, back to 1990. Uh, this was kind of a big deal because, you know, I didn't know anybody who had a TV in their bedroom. And so I thought to myself, like, I, could, I don't have to share the TV with my parents. Like, I could play video games whenever I want, however long I want. Like, it was a really cool notion to be able to do that. And I don't know if I asked for it. I can't remember. But I remember that my two big gifts, the way that Hanukkah works generally is, uh, or at least the way that we did it in my family, uh, was the first two nights were the big gifts and then you would get you know like smaller gifts here and there you know throughout the uh, the two you know the, or the, the rest of the days and then the last day uh, is when you get your you know another big gift so my big gift on the first night uh, actually my I got two gifts on the first night one was Ninja Gaiden 2 uh, the second gift was a 19 inch, uh, 19 inch sharp TV. So that that was my gift, uh, and I thought that it was pretty cool. Uh, this game is one of my favorite games of all time. It's easily on, like, like I'd say top ten list. Honestly, um, I don't know what it was, but like I just thought it looked really cool. Like I love the the box art alone. For the game and gameplay uh, it, it wise it was just so tight uh, such an awesome action platform game and uh, you know I, I, I spent countless hours playing this game as a kid and now I, I could pretty much beat it in one shot for the most part um, I had a lot of, I've, I've had a lot of fun over the years uh, with Ninja Gaiden 2 so I have to kind of be grateful for that uh, that one day because I wouldn't have been able to probably beat it back then if it wasn't for the fact that I had my own TV because otherwise I would have always had to share the TV with my family and I never you know I wanted like some supreme game time man so that's that's my first story so that was like 1990 uh, now we're gonna move into 1990 I want to say 4 94 yeah 94 Super Nintendo was out I had gotten the Super Nintendo for my birthday in I think it was 92 uh, my birthday's in like March, so I had uh, just I loved the Super Nintendo. Absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorite systems of all time. You know, right up there with the NES, and still is to this day. I mean, if you look at my collection of games, the two games, the two systems that I have the most games for are my Nintendo and Super Nintendo. So, um, I I had a subscription to Nintendo Power, and I think I may have talked about this in a previous video, like way back in the day, like. You know, some of you, some some of you may remember this from like years ago. I used to have a little short uh, video series called Nesmeries, uh, which was designed specifically to be like memories about the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, like etc. So uh, this is basically rehashing this story. But uh, in 1994, I had a Nintendo Power subscription, and one of the things they used to do is they used to send you these VHS tapes in the mail. One of the tapes that I got was this tape that, it was like a top secret tape. It was all green, like green leaved, and it had Donkey Kong on it with the like Nintendo logo. And it was like, you know, top secret classified information or whatever. And I was like, Nintendo's sending me videos, like what? So I put it in my VHS player and learned about Donkey Kong Country. And it was like a behind the scenes look at the game, they give you tips, they give you information about the title. It was hosted by this goofy guy. I'll, I'll put a link down below to a, like a video. I believe uh, uh, somebody put up a video of like a high def version of that video. It might have been My Life in Gaming, don't quote me on that. Uh, they have a great channel as well, so check them out. I'll, I'll link it down below, but I'm almost positive that they're the ones that put that video up. If not, well, I don't know, still go, still go check out their channel. Anyways, yeah, so I remember watching this video every day after school. I was pumped. I was stoked. I was so hyped for this game. I was in sixth grade 
if I recall. I think I was in sixth grade. And I mean, I was Donkey Kong Country obsessed. I was obsessed with, with the franchise, with the series. Um, you know, it was, it was a brand new series at the time, but it was using, you know, old characters, you know, with the Donkey Kong universe. So anyways, uh, Donkey Kong Country, they also had a demo of the game for like the first like two levels, I think it was, and that was on the Super NES uh, in like Toys R Us. So I would, you know, like drag my dad out to Toys R Us like, like constantly to play this demo for this game that wasn't out yet. And I like wanted this game so bad, like I wanted it, I needed it, I was like, I gotta have this game. And they knew, they knew that I wanted the game. So lo and behold, this isn't my original copy, but lo and behold, I ended up getting the game, of course. Um, so yeah, this is my original, this is not my original, but it is, uh, I had to get this one again, complete in box. Um, but I'm just, everything about this game was fantastic. I mean, I remember just wanting to get all the secrets. I remember getting the strategy guide and just memorizing it, like go, going through. And it was one of the first games other than Link to the Past where I like religiously was studying the strategy guide. That and probably like the NES uh, guide that they had like a bunch of NES games that Nintendo Power put out. But this was definitely one of the games I, this was one of the first games I like 100 percented And part of that was thanks in part to not only that video, that I saw, which had like, you know, all about bonus, you know, they'd tell you all the bonus information, but also Nintendo, um, the, the Nintendo Power Strategy Guide. So um, this is a classic. This will forever and always be one of my favorite games of all time. So that was 94. I had gotten that as uh, my number one like gift as for the first day of, of Hanukkah uh, or the first night or whatever. And I just, I loved it. It's, it's a great game. This next one, is is kind of an interesting story because I, I kind of I kind of cheated a little bit. Um, so we're gonna jump ahead to ninety. Uh, oof, I want to say ninety eight or ninety nine. Yeah, ninety eight or ninety nine. Think ninety nine, but don't quote me on that. Anyways, uh, my parents had gotten divorced in. I was in eighth grade. And that was right around 95, 96, around then. So I, at that point in time, my parents were like, you could get a computer or you can get an N64. And this was probably uh, within uh, every other system that I had gotten other than the Nintendo, so I guess just the Super Nintendo, if you will, was like a, like, right, close to launch. Like I got it in 92 I think and it came out in 91 and it was like a couple months after it came out or something like that so yeah. But the N64, I, I really, other than Mario 64 which again I would go to the game store and religiously play the demo for that over and over again because I loved it. I thought it was great. But there were no other real games that I wanted other than Mario 64. It wasn't enough to sell me on the system. And I was a huge fan of Zelda Link to the Past. So I said to myself, I'm not gonna get the N64, I'll get a computer. And I started playing Doom and Final Doom, Ultimate Doom, Quake, stuff like that. Uh, that was kind of what I was interested in at that point in time. And later on, like a couple of years later, uh, around like the 98, 99 time period, um, after I had you know, really gotten pretty good with a computer, my I had found out that Zelda Ocarina of Time was coming out. And I mean, like, I remember I saw it in the movie trailers. Uh, they, they, they actually paid, Nintendo paid to put a trailer up, like, in movie theaters. And, like, I would go to the movies just to see this trailer. It was, like, phenomenal. It was really cool. Like, I don't think anybody had done that at that point. They spent, like, so much money on, on marketing uh, Ocarina of Time. And, I was walking around uh, with my mom or my dad or somebody, uh, some parental figure, uh, and walking around Toys R Us because that was where we went to get games. We, I didn't really go anywhere else. I mean, there was KB's as well, but uh, nobody I knew really went to KB's. Everybody always wanted to go to uh, Toys R Us. We didn't have GameStop. We didn't have EB Games. We had Funko Land, 
but that was it. I, I think Babbage's was around, but I I didn't know about about that software, etc. Those type of companies before they all got bought out by GameStop. So uh, I was running around in Toys R Us and I saw this, and I saw the neon green controller because green's my favorite color, and I was like. I have to have this system. I have to have that controller. I have to. And so my parents uh, were like, oh, you know, okay, well, you know, maybe we'll get it for you for Hanukkah. I was like, all right, cool. So it kind of peaked. Um, I ended up finding out that my mom had gone halfsies with my dad on the system. And I didn't know that she had it, so I went in the closet in her bedroom and found it. And it was like, I wanted to open it so bad, but I took it out, and I looked at it, and I looked at the back of the box, and this is my original box from, from when I got this as, as a gift. So this is the original one that I still have. You know, I don't have a lot of childhood stuff, like not a ton, but this I will never get rid of. This was just such an, a huge memory for me, because I remember sneaking a peek at this system and just like staring at the box, just like, and like looking at the controller and I wanted to take it out and look at the controller and um, I don't have the original system anymore unfortunately but I do still have the original yep the original neon green controller the original one that I still have and you know what I played I played the crap out of this thing I mean uh, so many games were played on this and I still have the original analog joystick you can see if you look like around it's really not that badly like I played everything I played Mario Party I played Mario Kart I played everything and yeah I played the thing with the you know uh, I played Perfect Dark so many hours of Perfect Dark with this um, you name it GoldenEye uh, Smash Brothers tons of Smash Brothers uh, Mario 64, just uh, WWF Attitude, like so many games for the N64 that I played with this controller. And I still have it, so it's just like really warm, fond memories of the N64. I know a lot of people really kind of dump on the N64 because of the small library of games, but I love the system. I think it's a great system. I think the library is kind of lackluster overall, especially compared with the PlayStation, but I gotta say the games that are on the N64 are so good. The ones that are really good are really good. And there are some hidden gems. Maybe maybe I'll cover some in the in the future as far as the N64 goes. But yeah, so I, I just I love the fact that I have this controller still. So that's it, that's my little Hanukkah stint as far as that goes. Um, you know, Hanukkah's over right now, but I did wanna kind of, you know, everyone's in the festive mood for the holidays, and so I, I kind of felt the need to, you know, talk about it a little bit with you guys. So uh, thanks for listening and watching. I wanna wish everybody a very happy holiday to whichever holiday you celebrate. Doesn't matter what it is. If you celebrate something, awesome. So happy holidays to all, and again, thanks so much for watching, and uh, yeah, I kind of want to play some N64 now. I think I'm going to go do that.